So today I'm going to ta be talking to you about um, what exactly you plan to do, um, other than photosynthesis. I'll also be talking to you about what exactly the cycles are happening today, maybe what it looks like to them, right? and why it matters, why it matters to us. And you know, First of all, we should go over, you know, what it does in photosynthesis. So class, what do you think a plant does other than photosynthesis? Um, it prints colors in its cell. It prints colors? That's a great answer, Mr. Christian. Mr. Christian Gray. Okay, so um, as leaves sometimes turn colors in the fall, um, they also do other great things, such as, you know, help produce, like I said with the leaf does. And uh, all, an important thing that they do also is protect themselves from the environment, among other things. Okay, so what do you think a plant has to defend themselves from? Um, what do you think a plant would have to defend itself from out in the wild? Um, animals that eat plants? That's a great answer, and that's actually correct. So herbivores, which is uh, animals that eat plants, um, also um, other things that plants would have to defend themselves from would be things like temperature, you know, the drought, um, and also pathogens, which include, you know, fungus, bacteria, and other tiny little living things that we can't see with our bare hands. Um, and these things all contribute to the plant's life. Like if it if if it can't defend itself against these things, the plant will just die. And so going to our next point here, what is the defense mechanism? What am I talking about today? So basically, a uh, defense mechanism in plants is a physical, chemical, or protein-based defense that the plant has developed over a long period of time to protect itself from these things that we have just talked about, like you know, temperature, drought, um, animals, all those things. So what exactly does that defense look like? Can anybody tell me maybe what they think a defense would look like in a plant? Class? Um, I don't know. Do you think you can take the next one, please? Of course. Not many people know what a defense mechanism looks like, and that is exactly what I'm going to do here today. So I'm going to talk to you about the four main kinds of plant defenses. And the first I'm going to talk about is camouflage. Camouflage is something that is hard to find, but it's something that we can easily see once we find the example. A great example of camouflage is the difference between the stinging nettle and the dead nettle. Now the stinging nettle, as you can also already tell, is a stinging plant. It has little hairs on the leaves that are made of silica, which is something that we make glass out of. Now, as you can probably tell, by the description, this plant, the little hairs are very sharp and they're filled with poison. And that's why when you touch a stinging nettle, you get like a little rash that burns from all the poison. Now, as you can see, the dead nettle was extremely close to the stinging nettle. And scientists have actually found that animals can't really tell the difference. Now, this is super important because this plant has developed this way of looking, of the physical appearance, so that animals will not try to eat it. It's not even in the same family as the stinging nettle, but since it looks so close like it, the animals avoid trying to eat it. They can't tell the difference. 
our next um, defense that we will talk about today is structural. Now, some, the structural part is something that we can both see and not see. Um, it's something that's on the inside of components, um, part of it. Um, a structural defense is something that all plants have in the form of the cell wall, which is um, what the plants use to um, have that shape that they stay in to um, get the stomach. Um, but something that not all plants have is um, a very unique sort of structural defense, such as the barrel cactus here, which has the modified leaves. So instead of the regular leaves that you usually see, it has um, been turned into little spines. So this helps the plant not only from losing water in the hot desert, it also protects the plant from being um, eaten up for the, the water that it has stored inside from other animals. Another great example of this unique sort of um, structural protection is this other plant, which I will show you a little video of, called the mimosa plant. And this plant actually folds up its leaves and drops down whenever it, it has any contact from a whole animal actually. So if it's a bug, the bug will try to eat it, but then the plant will fold up its leaves and drop the bug to bend it to eat it. And it has been known to actually scare away larger animals by moving. So it will try to eat something that moves and drops. The next defense that we'll talk about is chemical defense. Now, unfortunately, although it's very interesting, chemical defenses are something that we can't see with our naked eye. There's something that happens inside of your plant that uh, works towards protecting them in a different way. Now, a good example of this would be a foxglove plant. Now, while it's very beautiful, it's not really something that you would want to eat. Um, this plant actually contains chemicals that would make you throw up, they would make you feel dizzy, they would make you hallucinate, and even kill you if you ate it. Now this plant isn't exactly screaming, don't eat me, but um, animals have actually developed a sense of what they should and shouldn't eat over time, and so they leave this plant alone based on that knowledge. Um, another thing that can help protect a plant that, that is a chemical is an essential oil. Um, and a good example would be mercury. Everybody knows what you know, mercury is. And um, essential oils can actually protect the plant from the pathogens that I was talking about earlier, like bacteria and fungus. The last thing that I will talk about today is surveillance. Now, surveillance is something also very cool that we can't see with the naked eye, um, and it's the ability of the to tell the difference between damage and actual damage from a pathogen or an animal. And the way that it does it is chemically, but the defense that it has against it is physical as well. So the plant can tell, like let's say a fungus started growing on a leaf, the plant can tell when this fungus is on it, and it'll actually go into several levels of defense um, based on this knowledge. So the first stage that it goes into is basic resistance. Now, this is something that all of the plants have because of that cell wall. That's basically the resistance that they have. It's this cell wall that they have that protects them on the outside. Unfortunately, pathogens have been also been evolved to go past these defenses, and so the plant has actually developed a different form of well, the next level of defense, which is hypersensitive response. Now, what happens in this hypersensitive response is that when the plant um, knows that it's being attacked, it actually goes into self-destruct mode around the pathogen to prevent further damage to the plant. Um, it can also protect itself from larger animals like DLT, and it does that by 
um, producing chemicals that the animal, animal knows that it shouldn't be. Um, it's not something that can easily be explained or like regarded as natural, but it's something that is very dangerous. Um, so after learning all of this, so after learning all of these things, why do dispensers matter in plants? Because they can catch flies. Yeah, that's true. And as we all know, plants actually do a lot for us as humans. They we use paper um, that comes from trees. We have plastic bags also comes from trees and some other things too. Um, but a huge thing that a lot of people um, don't uh, recognize every day is that actually plants produce a large, like, pretty much 100% of our food source. Um, even meat. Um, the cows that we grow here in the United States are given corn to eat. And where does the corn come from? Out of the ground. And so um, an important thing to think about is, you know, all of these things that the plants have to defend against, um, all of this ties, in, ties into our food sources. Now we have actually developed new ways of, um, of making strands of different foods like meat and making them more um, more protected against these um, different things that can attack them, making sure that our crop will be bigger and we will be able to feed more people. Um, the big problem is that new packages are developing every day, you know, they can just mutate out of nowhere and some, something, something might pop up that we don't know what to do with. And um, something maybe like wheat rust, it's a fungus that happens on wheat and you can't really eat it anymore. So something that I want you to think about today is maybe how else we can develop new ways to protect this food source that we have. And are there any questions? No? Okay. So basically what we went over today, <laughs> what we went over today is the four main ways that a plant has developed to protect itself which is surveillance, camouflage, chemical, and structural. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm really having trouble with this one.